For today's lesson, we will be discussing about representing inverse functions. So in the last video, we already discussed what is an inverse function. So this time, we will try to identify what are the ways on how we can represent inverse functions. In representing inverse functions, we can use table of values. So all we have to do is we just have to interchange the x and y coordinates in a table of values of a function to come up with the table of values for its inverse function. So since what we know is that when we say inverse function, we are just changing the values of x and y. So again, all we have to do is to interchange them in the table of values so that you can uh, come up with the inverse of the given function. Another way is to represent inverse function using the graphs. We can draw the graph of an inverse function by plotting the points from its table of values. So once you are done interchanging the values of x and y in the table of values, all you have to do now is to plot the points in the Cartesian plane and then you now have the graph of the inverse of the given function. We also have what we call as the horizontal line test. If any horizontal line drawn anywhere on the graph intersects the graph exactly once, then the graph is one-to-one. -one. Otherwise, it is not one-to-one. -one. On the previous discussion, we discussed that if a function is one-to-one, -one, then it has an inverse function. So to identify if a function is one-to-one, -one, we have to use the horizontal line test. If the line intersects the graph exactly once, then we will call it out as a one-to-one -one function. If the horizontal line touches the graph more than once, then it's not one-to-one. -one. Therefore, it doesn't have an inverse function. Let's try it with this example. Determine whether the function represented by the following graph has an inverse function by performing the horizontal line test. So given that we have this graph right here, in order for us to identify if it has an inverse function, we have to make sure that this one is one-to-one. -one. And how are we going to do it? Uh, we have to use the horizontal line test. So all you have to do is to draw a horizontal line anywhere along the graph. So if we will try to put the horizontal line here, let's say on this side of the graph, as you can see, it intersects the graph at exactly one point. But again, remember, you have to make sure that if we put the horizontal line anywhere on the graph it will always be or it will always intersect the graph at exactly one point so by putting the line here we cannot assume right away that this one is one-to-one -one. we have to really make sure so how are you going to do it you have to try to put the horizontal line on other parts of the graph so let's try here so if you put the horizontal line on the lower part of the graph, still, it intersects the graph at exactly one point. But we can still try here on this side. Now after putting the horizontal line on the middle part of the graph, you can see it now intersects the graph more than once. So it intersects the graph at this given point right here, also on this point, and then on this one. This means now that the given graph here is not a one-to-one -one function. And if it failed to satisfy the horizontal line test, that means this one is not a one-to-one -one function. And it doesn't have an inverse function. So again, this graph right here doesn't have an inverse function because after performing the horizontal line test, it intersects the graph more than once. So that means it's not a one-to-one -one function as well. Let's try another example. This time, we have to sketch the graph of the inverse of the given function using the graph of the function f below. So we now have the graph and all we have to do is to graph also the inverse of this given function. Now what we will do here is, we need to create table of values and we have to identify points from the given graph. And then all we have to do after that is to interchange the values of x and y. So again, we have to identify points from this given graph and also 
create the table of values. So this first point right here, the coordinates of that is negative 3, 10. So that's negative 3, 10. The second point right here is 0, 4. And the third one is 2, 0. Now, after identifying points from the given graph, let's now create a table of values so that we can clearly see the values of x and y. So, we have x here and then the y. So, for the first point, negative 3, 10, we have 0, 4 on the second one and then we have 2, 0 on the third point. Now, after creating the table of values, we already identified the values of x and y. In order for us to identify the inverse, all we have to do now is to change the positions or interchange the values of x and y. So, x now will become the y and y will become the x. So, let's write here. So, we have now 10 as the x and then the y is negative 3. Second point, 4 now is the x and then y is 0. Third, we have 0, 2. So this is now the points that represents or part of the given inverse function. So we have 10, negative 3. We have 4, 0. We have 0, 2. Now after identifying points that are part of the graph of the inverse of this function f, all we have to do next is to plot them in the Cartesian plane. So in plotting, I will be just using Desmos so that you can clearly see where are the points. So let's put here first the original function that we have. So the points that we have are negative 3, 10, 0, 4, and 2, 0. This is the graph of the original function. Okay, again, this is the graph of the original function. Now, let's try to plot the points of the inverse. So, we have 10, negative 3. We have 4, 0. And you have 0, 2. And then, all you have to do next is to connect it with a straight line. So, this orange line right here, this is now the inverse of this given function. So this is our function f. This one now is the inverse of the given function. So we're able to represent the inverse of this given function using the graph and also using the table of values. Now for our last example, this time we are given the equation. So find the inverse of f of x equals 5x minus 1. Then draw the graph of the given equation and its inverse. So, we're given the function f of x equals 5x minus 1. So, we have to identify the equation of its inverse and we have to graph it as well. So, recall, whenever we have to identify the inverse of a function, first the thing that we have to do is to change f of x with y. So, let's write here y equals 5x minus 1. Then, after you change the f of x with y, we have now to interchange the variables x and y. So y will become x and x here will become y, then minus 1. After that, we now have to solve for y in terms of x. So what we can do here is we can move negative 1 on the other side. So it will become x plus 1 equals 5y. Now since we only need y here on the other side, just divide both sides by 5. So this will be cancelled. Then we now have y equals x plus 1 over 5. And then we just have to change y with inverse of f of x. So we now have x plus 1 over 5. So this is now the equation of the inverse of the given function f of x. Now, after identifying the inverse, next thing that we have to do is to graph. Now, how are we going to graph this? So, in graphing, of course, you need to have points. Now, we have to create a table of values first for the original function, which is f of x equals 5x minus 1. Now, looking at the function, 
uh, it is a linear function because the highest degree is 1. So that means the graph of this is a line. And in order for us to graph a line, we should have a minimum of two points. So with that in mind, we can just identify two points from f of x and then we can now graph it. So it's up to you. You can assign any values of x. Um, but I think we can just use 1 and negative 2 so that we have a positive and a negative number. So let's have here the table of values. So we are doing this for f of x equals 5x minus 1. Let's just consider negative 2 as the value of x and also 1. Then all you have to do now is to identify what is the value of y given that x is negative 2. So again, we're, we're using this one. So f of negative 2 equals 5 times negative 2 minus 1. So we have negative 10 minus 1 or negative 11. So if x is negative 2, the value of y is negative 11. Then let's solve for 1. So f of 1 equals 5 times 1 minus 1. So this is 5 minus 1 or 4. So if x is 1, y is 4. So these two points right here, we will plot this later on so that we can see the graph of the original function. Now, in order for us to graph the inverse of this function, all we have to do is to interchange the values of x and y. So what we will have here is we have x and y again. But this time, again, we will interchange. So x now is negative 11. Then the corresponding y is negative 2. And then for the second point, x is 4. The corresponding value of y is 1. So we will use these points. And then we will see the graph of the original function and also the inverse. So let's use again Desmos to plot the points. But you can also do this manually. So all you have to do is to draw a Cartesian plane. So let's plot first the original function, the f of x. So we have there the points negative 2, 11. Negative 2, negative 11 rather. And then we have 1, 4. So these are the two points that we obtained after we assign values for x. And of course, f of x is equal to 5x minus 1. So if you don't have Desmos, you plot the points and then connect with a straight line. So this is the graph of the original function. Now let's plot the points after we interchange the values of x and y. So we have negative 11, negative 2. So this point right here. Then we also have 4, 1. So this point right there. And then... Again, connect with a straight line. So this is the function, the inverse of the function a while ago. So x plus 1 all over 5. So this is now the graphs of the function f of x and its inverse, which is x plus 1 all over 5. So that's how you will identify or graph the inverse. So all you have to do is to use table of values and then plot in a Cartesian plane. So that's it for today. I hope you learned something about how to represent inverse of functions using table of values and also using the graphs. And see you next time.